G'day, I'm James, and I'm so looking forward to coming up to Edmonton to talk about fractions. And do you know what? Fractions are hard. They're actually really, really hard. So let's see if we can figure out once for all what a fraction is, what's the best thing we can do for our fabulous students to have deep learning, deep understanding, and a deep intuitive feel for what a fraction actually is. Now, of course, we know this is the story. In fact, we start off with fractions being a notion of a part of a whole. Please circle two thirds of the kittens. That's fine. We can circle two thirds of the ki kittens. We get a great intuitive feel as a fraction is a part of a whole. So we want to do pieces of pie, two fifths of pie, one third of a pie. Great. So a fraction is just a call to action. It's not actually a number right there. But then, of course, we want to do mathematics. So during the curriculum, we actually start doing things with fractions, like adding them and subtracting them and so on. And then things get a little, little bit shaky. I mean, maybe it makes sense to add pieces of pie. So I'm thinking parts of a whole addition maybe makes sense. Just bring those pieces together and they've got some more pie. Great. But what does it mean to multiply pieces of pie? It makes no sense. So we change the model of what a fraction is as we go through. In fact, as we go through the entire story, the curriculum story of fractions, we keep changing the model of what we think a fraction is. And we never actually say in the end, by the way, kiddos, here's what a fraction actually is. After all this work, we've just got all these different wayward models in all directions. It just becomes a confusing, confusing story. Let's wrap that story together together when I come up to Edmonton. It's going to be great. So we'll talk about, you know, parts of a whole. We'll do all the, you know, usual things about addition and, and multiplication and subtraction and division of fractions. We'll actually play with ways to simplify mixed numbers. We'll play with percentages. We might get to talking about Egyptian fractions. And we'll start talking about decimal representation of fractions. And we're in for a surprise because we know, we've been told, that not every number is a fraction, but do you actually own an irrational number for yourself? Can you actually create your very own irrational number that you know for yourself personally truly is irrational? Well, let's do that today. Let's come up with your own personal irrational numbers by the end of the day as well. So we'll just cover it all. It's going to be great. It's going to be fun. And we'll just make sure this is a wonderful human connected story with deep understanding and deep intuitive joy. All right. Looking forward to seeing you then.